Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. I'm Agustin Jimenez. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. This video will be about the Dim Expert tool, why use Dim Expert, what is Dim Expert for, and how do you use Dim Expert? We will answer these questions in this video. When a designer creates a part model and builds its features, the information used is not always significant to how the part should be manufactured. This is where the Dim Expert tool comes into play. Dim Expert is a tool that allows designers to create dimensions that are suited for manufacturing drawings as opposed to using dimensions used while designing. Here's a drawing of a part model where model items has been used to dimension its features. If you have never used model items, it is a quick way to dimension your model by populating your drawing views with the recorded dimensions that were used as you designed the model. When using model items, SOLIDWORKS default is to place the dimensions in the drawing views as they were placed in the 3D model file. Typically, this is a messy outcome. A pro tip I learned from another application engineer is to uncheck the Use Dimension Placement in Sketch checkbox, which will display the dimensions in a nice, neat manner as opposed to where it was placed in the model. However, when using model items, many of these dimensions are not appropriate for manufacturing. Let's run our model through the Dim Expert tool. First, let's find where Dim Expert lives. You can get to Dim Expert by enabling the MBD Dimensions tab if it's not already displaying. To do this, right click anywhere in the Command Manager and select Tabs and MBD Dimensions. Many of the Dim Expert commands can also be found from the left side Dim Expert Manager tab found here. The quickest way to get started with the DIM Expert tool is to use Auto Dimension Scheme. However, you can add dimensions, datums, and other items manually or a combination of Auto Dimension Scheme and manual additions of information, which is what I will do. In the Auto Dimension Scheme property manager, you first select your part type, prismatic or turned. This is not a turned part, so I will use prismatic. Tolerance type has plus or minus and geometric tolerancing options. I will use plus or minus for this example. Pattern dimensioning has the options of linear and polar. Polar would be, for example, a round plate with a circular bolt hole pattern. I will leave it at linear. Under reference features, we have three datum options. I will have two datums for this example. For scope, you can have Dim Expert analyze all the features or you can manually select features. Feature filters controls which features Dim Expert recognizes and considers for dimensioning and tolerancing when you select all features under scope. Once all the settings have been set, hit the green check to continue. Dimensions with tolerances will be placed on the screen. The dimensions are placed in accordance with the planes they are associated with and make the most sense. However, dimensions can be moved to other planes if appropriate, for example, by right-clicking this dimension and selecting Select Annotation View. The two planes appropriate for this dimension is front and top. The color coding on the screen helps to visually see if your part has been fully defined. No color means those features have not been defined at all. Yellow means partially defined and green represents fully defined. Using the available commands, we can fully define our model manually. In this example, I will go back to auto dimension scheme and add a third reference. This has almost completely defined my model except for one feature. I'll use the Angle Dimension tool to fully define it. The tolerancing and display of the dimensions can be controlled from document properties. The overall drafting standards will change the display of the dimensions. 
For this case, I'll switch it to ANSI. Under Dim Expert, you will find many categories of settings you can change to achieve your desired look and tolerancy. For example, under Display Options, Slot Dimension is set to displaying the dimension of the slot in a single callout and a radius dimension. I wanted to dimension the width and length dimensions, so I will set it to this option here. So I'll do a quick rebuild and I'll redo my auto dimension scheme so that I can get the desired look for my slot dimensions. When creating a drawing, you can import all the dim expert annotations from the task pane. Enable import annotations and dim expert annotations. I want the angle dimension on the bottom side of the part to display in my top view, so I want to have include items from hidden features turned on as well. Then you can do a bit of cleanup from here and you can manually move and manipulate dimensions as needed. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave us a comment below if you have a topic you would like us to cover in a future video. Visit our website goengineer.com for access to our personal training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Bye for now.